So when I was 16, um, there was this girl, which is how a lot of stories start. Um, yeah, I had dated a little bit before then. There was the girl in sixth grade that we dated for a year. There was the girl I met at CIY freshman year. Uh, but really, there wasn't a, a serious long-term relationship until I was 16. Um, and and she, was a, she was a great girl. And um, she was interested in me. And I was interested in her. But as our relationship progressed, I, I threw myself, like I gave everything to that relationship. And here's what I mean. Uh, not necessarily physically, although yes. Um, I, I gave... Um, myself unreservedly like I threw myself at that relationship like it was like I was the last guy on earth like there was no other options right and you know we were both 16 and we were both figuring out like who we were as people and what it looked like to be in a relationship and and things got messy and, and eventually we broke up and breaking up is hard and breaking up like to be quite on, honest is really painful and as I thought about that in the in the next few weeks and months as I kind of bounced back from that relationship I walked away with a lesson one lesson in fact it was one word and the word was this never as in never will I be hurt again? Like never will I give myself fully to that relationship? Like never will I let somebody in, trust them, and then get burned? Never again. See, I think our, our life experiences have a tremendous amount of things, that, the amount of lessons that they can teach us, right? Whether it's an experience with God or an experience with people, I think there's a lot that can be learned about that. Um, here's the problem is if we're not careful or we lean only on our own understanding, uh, we're going to take those lessons and they will be guided not by God or by goodness or by trust, but by fear, right? Like, the truth is that lesson that I learned never w was far, far more influenced by my fear of letting somebody else in, which had incredible potential to change my future. Right? See, because as anybody who's been in a relationship knows, you can't both be in a relationship and not grant people access to your life. Like, you can't both be in a relationship and not trust somebody, right? Like, you can't be in a relationship and hold back. Like, if you're, if you're going to be committed to somebody, like, romantically, like, you got to be kind of all in. The, the trick is finding somebody who you can trust, somebody who that you can grow with. And I just didn't do that well. I think if I just spent more time thinking about it, I, I probably would have learned how to select somebody that was probably a better choice for me to date, right? Like that's a more realistic and, and healthy lesson. Uh, I think uh, that the lessons we teach ourselves, the lessons we learn um, can, can severely impact our future. They can hold us captive without us even knowing about it. Um, there's this guy named Paul. He was an early follower of Jesus, uh, but his story doesn't start out that way, right? Like Paul is actually a, a Jewish guy who thinks that the followers of Jesus are a threat to Judaism. And so he's this kind of up and coming religious leader and he gets tasked with like essentially, essentially like um, kind of like how the Nazis were reporting Jews, right? Like he was that guy. He would go and find uh, Christians and he would report them to Jewish council and, and many of them ended up being killed for their faith. This was Paul's job until one day he's traveling uh, to Damascus to hunt some Christians down and he meets this bright light and hears the voice of Jesus and says, Paul, Paul, or Saul was his name then. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And the bright, the light is so bright that it literally blinds him. And so the guy traveling with Saul at the time, soon would then become Paul, go to Damascus. And it says for three days, Paul was blind and he did not eat or drink anything. Talk about being trapped in your fields. I mean, this man is in a strange city. He's blind and he doesn't do anything for three days, not even eat or drink. So what does a newly blind guy do for three days? I think he thinks. I think he spends a lot of time and thought. 
<laughs> I think he does some meditation. That's what we're talking about today, actually, in our Trinity uh, group session and practices is we're talking about meditation. Now, we know meditation is to like set your mind on or revolve your mind around the, the ways and, and the patterns of God. In, in order to hopefully like gain some understanding about him, but also to make room for him in our hearts, like to sort of clean out and, and detach ourselves from the junk that's holding us back so that uh, we can uh, grab more firmly onto him. Now, some of that junk that, that holds us back, one of the things we call is fear, something from our past that, that drives us in our future, right? I, I think Paul did a lot of thinking during those three days. And as the story goes, there's God shows up to during those three days, God shows up to this guy named Ananias. He says, Ananias, I want you to go show Paul how to follow me. He, he, he said like literally, Ananias, go help Paul follow Jesus. And so he goes hesitantly because like, remember, Paul's job is to literally hunt down report uh, Christians. He goes and, and Paul ends up gaining his sight. Uh, and Paul, Saul becomes Paul, who becomes one of the most prolific early Christian leaders the world has ever known. So what's the fear that's holding you back today? Oh, think of it like this like if if your heart has a capacity like and not just like blood and guts I'm, I'm talking more your spirit your soul right if if there's a room in your soul how much of is it is it is dedicated to fear and perhaps more specifically where does that fear come from see my fear um that started with that one word lesson never um grew into some ugly tendencies like it handicapped me for the next two three four years um, I, I started treating women differently and not like I was, I was mean to them, but, but I, I never really engaged in relationship with them. I, I was he hesitant. Um, I, and not just romantically, like at work, like I, I always assumed because of that experience, I feared that I would be hurt. So I always assumed that, uh, uh, a woman who reminded me of this girl I dated was going to hurt me, which was not a good thing not a good thing at all. Uh, it finally took me like spending some time to think about my experience with that girl, to think about it holistically, not just like what she did, but also what I did and like the mistakes I made. And, and I sort of turned it around and investigated. And then I looked at that space in my heart and realized, man, that fear is really holding me back from really connecting with the people around me. So what is it for you? What's that fear? Where did it start? How can you clear that out and make some more room for Jesus? Because like it says uh, in some of the writers, of the, the early Christian writers say like perfect love removes fear. Here's your Trinity practice today. We want you to meditate on some experiences you've had both with God and other people. And we want you to, to sit down and spend some time thinking, at least 10, 15 minutes, and to write down all the lessons that you've learned um, from the experience with God and the experience with uh, another person. So you got to pick two, one experience with God and all the lessons you've learned, and then one experience with other people and with another person, I should say, and all the lessons you've learned there. Um, fully examine them write them all down, look at those lessons, see which ones are informed by fear and which ones are informed by love and God and, and just allow God to speak into that in any way that he might want to. Hey guys, have a great Trinity practice. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.